everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. We are really excited today. We have had uh, kind of a free month in March. And so it gives us the chance to do some bonus content. So today we are talking about one of our favorite hall stars, one of everybody's favorite hall stars. We are going to be talking <laughs> about the movies of Tyler Hines. This is going to be very fun. And we have a very special guest with us, his biggest fan on Twitter with us today. So thank you so much. The home of the Heine Shirts Twitter account is here. And thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Rachel, as the wardrobe mistress, I am honored. <laughs> <laughs> so this is really going to be fun. Yeah. So, oh, I'm really psyched for this. This is really going to be great. Yeah. So, how long have you been uh, a fan of Hallmark films? Oh my gosh. I <laughs> do not want to age myself, but yes, for a very long time. For a very long time. <laughs> very long time. Let's just say back to Levens and Days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. So, uh, yeah. I, I'm an oldie. I'm oldie as far as Hallmark viewership as well. <laughs> Go back to you know it really adds to the appreciation yeah. because as the production quality grows and especially I'm in the industry full disclosure not in the hallmark realm uh -huh. but um, I have a real appreciation not just as a fan fan but also as an industry person yeah. appreciating as things evolve whether it's story wise or production quality wise or whatever or like in the case of Tyler he really caught my eye. Yeah. Um, there was something really fresh and different about him from the usual casting. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's interesting because I interviewed Tyler before he, uh, he, his first movie had come out and yes, great was, interview, by the way, <laughs> thank you. He was <laughs> wonderful and charming, but I wasn't a hundred percent sure if he, if he'd be a great fit, you know, if people would accept sort of his style and, yes. and, and then, you know, cause I hadn't seen a movie I, of right. him and then I saw the movie and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Hello. <laughs> He's so good. <laughs> and, and it transferred so well. And I think it was a real breath of fresh air for, yes. for the whole Hallmark scene. Those, oh, those, I totally those sat scenes. up and took notice. I mean, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Hallmark is definitely on in the background sometimes. Right. Oh, it's yeah. It's not like I'm sitting there with a bowl of popcorn every time I see a Hallmark movie. <laughs> um, it's sort of yeah. like, you know, not exactly elevator Speaking noise, of the background. Oh, oh, my God! No way! <laughs> oh, Rachel, you got me. Tyler. It was whoa. such a hard secret to keep. <laughs> How did no. you do that? Oh, my God. So you slaying me. This, oh, my gosh. If we, if you don't know, listeners, Tyler. we have a special guest here on the podcast. <sighs> oh, too Thank funny. Thanks for coming on and talking with us. So hold what on, are we conducting this, this interview as the shirts? Or are we are we outing the true identity of the shirts? No. No. no that is my one that is my one thing. I was adamant with, with Rachel. It's like yes. no. So no, I need to keep my to keep the believe identity me, safe you, like that. Oh yeah. My God, dude, you've got rabid fans. <laughs> <laughs> so, I am not prepared to step into that world. <laughs> so Tyler, the last time we yeah. had you on, you had been in you hadn't been in any Hallmark movies. They were still coming. I had not. Yes. Why were you calling me then? <laughs> Why was I being interviewed? Because <laughs> we're on top of things at the Hallmarkies podcast. Uh, but you but now you've had future. this. I love it. You've had this amazing ride of so many good movies. People love you. People want your clothing. I mean, this is something pretty amazing. This ride that you've had. Oh my gosh. Yes, yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, want maybe. I mean, we pushed my clothing upon people. It's really <laughs> I've offloaded my clothing from the yeah. movies. No disrespect to the Heinz shirts. <laughs> I was going to uh, say, how is, how the is, wardrobe <laughs> is constantly refurbishing. Although Henleys are, con are, are definitely an in-demand. They, they t can get a little yeah. cocky at times in the wardrobe. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. But what has this been like for you? Like making these movies and, and just the, the whole new world of hallmark it's been amazing everybody's been very very sweet it's been a lot of fun i mean you know uh the shirts have been a, a true 
treasure and pleasure to watch that do its thing. It's been very fun. Everybody's very, very sweet, you guys included. It's like uh, it's a very, very uh, sweet family to be a part of. And Mm -hmm. I think I kind of lucked my way into it. I'm not sure how that happened, but (laughs) very grateful, very happy. It's been been a lot of fun. The fans are are really, really uh, good people, and it's nice to hear from them. Yeah. They so, truly are. Well, we were just talking about that. I think yeah. that you have a freshness about you that really, I think, just, I don't know. I guess we'll use the word resonated. It just really, I, I know I stood up and took notice right away. It really caught my eye. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, I, don't, I don't have the full sort of uh, uh, overview as you guys have. I, I wasn't super privy to the movies um, prior to doing them, and mm-hmm. I'm still, I, I haven't seen very many others than the ones that I've been a part of. And uh, that's, that's nice to hear, you know, because there there's a lot of these movies being made and there's a lot of very sweet, talented, uh, great people who work on them. And I've been able to get closer with those people, the executives at Hallmark and stuff. And mm-hmm. it's been mm-hmm. interesting to see the reaction, but I've just sort of taken it from my own point of view and, and taken the approach that I've, that I've taken with it, not knowing exactly what the outcome is. So it's, it's really nice to hear Mm-hmm. sentiments like that that people appreciate uh the the effort and the thought that i do put into these things because i do you know i, I like mm-hmm. these movies i think they're very very sweet i think they're very very needed and mm-hmm. uh i try my best to to make them fresh or, or interesting wherever i can you know it's a, it's a very specific kind of movie but i think there's room to keep sort of pushing it and i'm going to keep trying to keep finding ways to keep it creative and fun now that i've done i guess six at this point mm-hmm. um I think after the last one, Winter in Vail, I, I was wanting to take a minute to sort of reassess and see if there's any ways we can sort of um, evolve this thing so we can keep it interesting for the fans. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm still sort of figuring that out. Mm-hmm. Well, I appreciate well, I actually, that too. It's interesting. Yeah. And I actually, it's funny you should say Vail because I warned Rachel, um, being the geek that I am and in the industry myself, of course, I did a deep dive on IMD Pro Pro when it's kind of analyzing you know, who worked on each of these movies and what had they done before yeah. and what are the connections? And you know how there's, we have that little network button we can use. Um, I was surprised at the people I was connected with myself. And I really noticed the whole production team was dramatically different on Vale. And I found that so intriguing because it seemed different than a probably, lot of the other ones. Probably because yeah. it wasn't filmed in in vancouver right no yeah that one was in calgary that's interesting yeah. uh, that's interesting that you actually can notice the the sort of shift in in the work and in, in the actual final yeah. product of mm-hmm. it because yeah it was mm-hmm. it was a producer who uh, i think it was their first hallmark movie we shot it in calgary which i don't think many are shot there and mm-hmm. i think we were lucky in that um terry ingram who's a director i did uh mistletoe secret with um we hit mm-hmm. it off uh a lot on that movie and actually discovered a week, I think, into it that we had worked together when I was 13 years old. Um, no way. Yeah, yeah. We, we, <laughs> we both had separate stories of each other, not knowing who each other was. That's funny. And I forget how the show came up that we worked on together, oh, but then wow. I was describing this event that took place where he was having me shake a spear at a live jaguar, like, feet away from me. <laughs> and he's going, get closer. Can you get closer with the spear? Can you shake the spear? And I'm going, no, you come here. You shake the spear. This thing is like, it's away from me. What are you doing? Yeah. And he was like, oh, that was me who, who, who said that. I was on that set. And we realized, oh, wow, oh we actually worked together. And so, yeah, yeah we've we been sort of fast friends since then. That's cool. Well, and of course, Tyler, you know, you can attest to this. I mean, Rachel, you can't even believe how this – industry is so interrelated it doesn't matter i mean literally yeah. like yeah. you you know find out you know the same people like all different places around the globe when you're working with people and it, it, it's kind yeah. of crazy that way it makes it, it makes yeah it we got like we got lucky with bill community. yeah we got lucky because we had just worked together prior to that and then he, i was literally just thinking i think the day that he texted me that we were doing veil together um I was like, man, it'd be really great to work with Terry again. I really enjoyed that environment. And there's a certain way in which he approaches his um, movies that are, I mean, every director is different, but his sort of rhythm I really responded to. And I just kind of liked the simplicity of our working environment. So the fact that he was on the next one and I just 
literally thinking to myself, oh, I should text him, you know, it'd be great to do another one with him. I wish I could do them all with him. Mm-hmm. And then we were doing that one together. And then our, our cinematographer, Neil, he works on other shows like Arrow and these other bigger shows and, and he's a very talented guy. So I think all of that. And of course, Lacey, it's like, it was a, is a good, it was a good combination. Absolutely. It was the best of winter fest. I appreciate it. Best of winter fest oh, by yeah, far. So. For sh- oh, for sure. Oh, thanks. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, so one thing I admire about you, Tyler, is, is you seem to have such good chemistry with all of your leading ladies. And so I was wondering, is that something you like really try to become friends with the people or are you just so naturally <laughs> effervescent and charming that it, you don't have to work at it? <laughs> oh, very, very kind of you to say. Um, I mean, for me, I've, I've I've never been one for sometimes they like to set up these play dates on different projects where uh-huh. they have you go and sit down and get to know each other. I'm personally not one for those things. I think it's these movies are like, it's like being in high school. Like you're all stuck in the same place all day together. There's plenty of time to horse around while you're shooting and get to know each other. And so I've never put a lot of um, emphasis on, on that. I feel like the work is the work. And uh, if you do your work and, and find moments and beats inside the story that you're trying to tell and, you know, find the good qualities within those stories to try to sort of elevate and all that kind of takes care of itself. I've been exceptionally lucky that every um, co-star that I've worked with has been incredible as far as human beings. And so that obviously doesn't hurt. It makes it for a better working environment. But I think with these movies, it's like, uh, there's just work to be done as an actor that you just kind of got to do. And I think if you do that properly, the rest kind of takes care of itself. It's true. Cause if you, if there's good chemistry between the couple, it just, it's does like 80, 89% of the work. I mean, you can have a pretty silly story, but I mean, most of these are on the silly side. Um, but uh, <laughs> if you buy the couple and you're enjoying that together and the script is witty enough, then that's it. It's done. Uh, yeah, Tyler, it's, very, I mean, it's, it's very important. Yeah. And you know, I love the way you, the way you were talking. Just the word "organic" just jumps out at me. It mm-hmm. does. I th- I think the way, if I can speak to what it seems like, that things just happen very organically with you, as opposed to like you said, a prep thing. Like, oh, go over and go out to dinner or do this thing, and get to know your castmates. Whereas life on set, I mean, it's its own experience and organically people get to know each other and that translates to the screen. Mm. Yeah. And I think for other people it's different and everybody's process is different. I have this like thing inside of me where if I'm with serious people, I want to be ridiculous. If I'm with ridiculous people, I want to be serious. I always want to. Mm -hmm. So when I'm (laughs) putting these circumstances that are somewhat controlled or contrived and like, Hey, get to know each other and be friends. I I have an instinct in me that wants to go against that somehow. So I think just for yeah. my own quirks, I'm like, that's not exactly what uh, I, I mean, that being said, you know, me and uh, Kelly Pickler, for instance, we sat down and smacked a few whiskeys uh, the night before we started shooting. And we had a blast. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm happy to do that all day, but it's not necessarily for me a must for, for having a good working environment. Just the person mm-hmm. themselves, uh, you know, is, is definitely, will come out when they're on set and, and, and the work, you know, the goal is to make it sort of feel effortless and the goal is to make it feel organic. And that's a priority that I make on these movies is trying to make it feel that way because we're watching two people have own their own realizations about their lives and about each other and fall in love. And that that's sort of the baseline that I always start to start with and, and work my way out from there. But, but uh, I'm glad that it actually, it, it trans, uh, translates and that yeah. you guys actually feel that way about it. It's really, really nice when I hear fans say specific things like that. It's like, it, it makes the, yeah. it makes me feel good that the work sort of received as it was intended to. Yeah. Well, and you know, Rachel, you being the expert that you are, you know, like Hallmark yeah. fans are legit. Like they will sniff something out if it's fake or <laughs> seems yeah. real. I mean, there's just <laughs> no... Yeah, at least on our that. podcast that's we keep it real uh but yeah we i've enjoyed all of your movies and i you know when when i first interview i thought is he gonna be a good fit for hallmark and then i watched your i watched falling for you and i was like oh my gosh this is perfect 
So <laughs> <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. I, I think you weren't the only one who felt that way. I think <laughs> the first one I did was, was, uh, it's Christmas Eve. And I think that circumstance happened, I think, um, because yeah. Leanne had, had picked specifically me, which I don't think I was really on their radar in any way, understandably. So, uh, I am a mess. Um, so being <laughs> a Hallmark may not have been the first choice. Um, but, uh, but they, to their, you know, uh, credit or, or, yeah. or not, they, they were on board with it. after the first one. Um, they were a little tentative on the first one. And then once the first one happened, I think everybody, um, felt comfortable yeah. and, and they kind of yeah. let me do my thing from there on out. And it's been great ever since. So That's you weren't alone in thinking that I may not be the right fit. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, that adds to your evolution, which yeah. has been really fun to watch. It really has. You and know, you kind of coming out more in the humor and the sarcasm and, oh my God, your delivery. Ah, it's <laughs> yes. great. It's great. Uh, so I'm curious, I that. if you had to pick of the six movies you made, if you had to pick yeah. one of them that you'd most like to do a sequel for, do you think that there's, which one would you pick? That's interesting. Um, it's tough. I think, uh, honestly, after every one of these that we've done, there's always been sort of talk of that. I think everybody involved. And I don't know if I get the impression personally that a lot, there's just a lot of positivity in the area. And I think everybody mm -hmm. is very nice to each other. So I don't take it uh, too personally that, people are this nice to me <laughs> in particular. <laughs> I think I feel like every, all these actors get this kind of uh, love and support, which is very nice. They're not asking for every actor's shirts though. Let's be real. <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe they will now. Who knows? Um, but, but yeah, I think, there's a, there's I think a lot they're all for a reason. What's that? I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to talk over you. I was just noting today as I went through everything that there's a lot more Henleys popping up in movies. <laughs> Oh, really? Is there? Okay. Because I just, yeah, that's something I observed right. in the beginning. It was uh, at the very first wardrobe fitting. I was like trying things on and we were trying to build a look and everything that kept getting approved was Henley. So I was like, oh, okay. So we're, we're in the Henley business, I guess. Yeah. And it was like, oh, okay. So I just started relying on Henley. And that was my personal joke. And so when we finished a few of these, I was like, well, why, you know, why don't I just give these to people? It seems to be kind of a running gag for me. And I think the, the viewers maybe even notice the same thing that Henley's just look good on these dudes. And so um, <laughs> they end up living a lot in these movies. Well, I think what the one that they should do the sequel on is probably flip that romance because you what guys you could have Love like, it. we were saying on the podcast the other day, you could be like the Chip and Joanna of, uh, of Hallmark. <laughs> Sorry, you have like a, a, a home renovation show or something like that. Yeah, that's definitely one that could uh, have a rinse and repeat type effect of like yeah. different projects, different things, the business growing or whatever it is. It could be a lot of fun you could do with that. I think Winter in Vail obviously was, I think because the, the team was really special and Calgary was really special. Um, the crew, everybody was really, really, really great out there. Um, not to take away with any of the other ones. The other ones have been uh, equally as fantastic, but there was something a little different and fresh about Vail. And me and Lacey really did have a good time together talking about um, other ideas that we can do together. So that would be good. Mm. Um, but yeah, definitely, I think Flip would be a good, uh, easy sort of write for the next next movie. Mm -hmm. I think so. It would be fun. And I, I definitely think that the Misto Secret, you guys definitely elevated it from the novel. I, <laughs> I'm not, I was not a big fan of the novel. And the novel's actually kind of creepy. It has this weird... <laughs> I, <laughs> I haven't yes. read it. Really? Yes. And because now and, I'm intrigued. How yes. Can, how so in the novel, be creepy? in the novel, he and her are like in, blogging friends, kind of, and they like are messaging back and forth or whatever. But he doesn't know her name. So he's like hunting her down. And he goes to the, he goes to uh, Midway and he's like knocking on doors and, and trying to find her. And it just, oh! it has a little, it's a little, <laughs> Hello, stalker. it's, it's a little, a little weird. Stalkerish. Yeah. It's a little stalkerish. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. It, so you, you guys did much better. <laughs> so oh my gosh. It. Okay. It's more over the novel. <laughs> you love yeah. the stalker angle. Plus, well, can I just say that was when I missed during the regular whole I mean how can you miss something in that much of a time to see Christmas movies but I managed to so I just recently saw it and I was really taken with it I was yeah. not expecting to be at all 
but I loved the um, the character. Uh, I'm blanking. I've got all my notes here. Well, I particularly liked you and, and uh, Christopher Russell in that movie in Mystical Secret. Yeah. I think that Christopher yeah, Russell he, is is the best playing kind of kind of a jerk. <laughs> I think he does a really good job <laughs> being a jerk. You mean you mean the best vapid character? <laughs> yeah, just kind of he's sort of thought thoughtless and and inconsiderate, but in a sort of a funny way. And I thought he did a good job. But he job. came around in the end. Yeah, yeah, he was thoughtful. I mean, he's just so he's just so darn good looking. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's just like <laughs> you just gotta hate the him. Square he's jaw, you talk so about so good looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's no, so but he, tall. he's an incredible guy. But, but even doing, yeah, he is a giant. And he is looking up at him begrudgingly to the entire movie. I'm sure it was fun to watch. Yeah. Um, but he, he's now, of course, nothing like that in real life. And of and that course. was a conversation right. me and him had right away. And we started doing the scenes. As he was like, "Is this kind of too much?" And I was like, "No, dude. Like, yeah. just ride that lane. It's perfect. It's exactly what I, I hope that you would do." And so then I get to do my thing, and we get to be, yeah. you know. Chris Farley and David Spade. And this yes. Was, like, it's a great Literally. little dynamic. Yeah, I agree. I, I could definitely see that. Like, there was a, like, you guys were, he like, had a sweet friendship, but he was kind of, but at the same time, you're very frustrated with each other, and it just worked. It was fun, and I, I think that's, he leaned into it, and it worked for me. He did a good job, and as did you. Yeah, I think that story, and I had this conversation, I think, with Terry, and maybe on the podcast or something with someone i was saying you know that story because every time i get these scripts i try to figure out okay what is it that's 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 interesting about this what is it that makes it kind of unique and and what are the qualities to sort of lean into and then there's a sort of a second pass where you go okay what are all the things you kind of need to navigate and sort out otherwise it's gonna end up landing in in the wrong way and that movie kind of had a lot of those landmines in it were like well this dynamic between the two of us can really kind of be bad if it's not done correctly but how do we make this work for us and i i personally you know we we have friends that we love despite of some of the things that they do and i thought that's the angle to make this sort of work is to not have him be malicious in any way and not having me be particularly overly upset about things it's it's just walking that line between friends that love each other for who they are despite the fact that they're so different and uh maybe bothered at times and and overstepping their boundaries here and there so i think because that script had so many of those things to sort of work out um doing the work and figuring those things out ended up uh really working in our favor in the end which was really nice it was nice Mm -hmm. to see that people really responded to our, our sort of friendship and then just the movie as a whole yeah I think that really speak, speaks to that execution. It was just spot on, yeah. in yeah. my opinion. It yeah, made my top on. 10 Christmas Hallmark, Hallmark Christmas list, so I enjoyed oh, nice. it. Yeah. It was good. When you do these top 10 Christmas movies, are you, are you talking like, like how far back are you guys going? Oh, <laughs> like just, years? just, well, no, it's just for last year. I, I, oh, we, for last it, year. we did our top 10, and we did an episode where we did a top 10 non, non-Christmas Hallmark and top 10 Christmas Hallmark. And uh, it's still, I mean, there's 40 movies, so <laughs> it's still pretty good to make my top 10. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, of the, 40 uh, Christmas of the movies, really? Yeah, there were 40 on Hallmark last year. Oh, so, my goodness. Brand new. Yeah, brand new. 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 So that was an intense experience. <laughs> Plus, we reviewed all the non-Hallmark, too. So uh, I watched and reviewed uh, 115 Christmas movies on the podcast. Oh my goodness! If you, I know. You, this is like a full-time job. You get yeah. to watch every single one. Of yeah, them. yeah, it basically is. I mean, during during Christmas, well, really, the Christmas season for me on the podcast started in September, uh, because the movies start in October. So uh, we right. have to, and we do our preview shows. We have our lifetime preview show, non Hallmark other channels preview show. We had two Hallmark preview shows, and so all that has to be planned. You have to plan all of the interviews that you're going to be doing and all the guest hosts that you're going to have on. It's, it, it was a lot of work, but it was great. Goodness. I, I was, uh, it's, so, it's great know, to have a project and to be doing something that you really love. So I feel blessed. Oh, great. So well, good you, at it. you have an interesting point of view having, having to, to do all that. If you ever have any thoughts or, or points of views on, on ideas on where it should go or should not go or things I should do by all means, you know, I, I, 
I try to like, uh, you know, I have other things that I'm doing, but I really try to do my due diligence to understanding sort of what the fan experience is because mm-hmm. these things, these movies are almost like a sport. You know what I mean? There's so many of them. And oh, we all yeah. kind of know the, the, the way in which they're being made and sort of what to expect when we're watching them. And so uh, yeah. I'm all ears when it comes to like, oh, you know, taking these stories and these sort of formulas that we're yeah. somewhat following and then finding ways to adjust them without going outside of the experience that we all love, but giving a new flavor or a new taste or a new experience within that framework is something that I'm very much interested in figuring out. So well, by one all of means, the things, if you have any thoughts on them all ears. Yeah. One of the things I can say is that we as a community, at least everybody that I know are really tired of party planning movies. Like in Winter yeah. Vale, it worked pretty well because there was, there was more, so there was many other more to it than that. Because the problem is, is that sometimes the party planning movies, they end up feeling like, a whole bunch of board meetings like they're too yeah. there's not enough intimate moments between the couple right. uh because they're just they're basically planning a business function and so it ends up feeling really boring and you don't have a chance to get that chemistry and so i think that one of the things that particularly in falling for you and flip that romance that works so well is that there were like little ways they subverted expectations, particularly with the kiss in both those movies. Those were big yeah. hits. <laughs> and, okay. um, you know, that like her, the cell phone rings and you, you just keep on with the kiss. That was a huge hit. Was Everyone brilliant. was crazy that was huge with huge that. Hit. And so <laughs> I think stuff like that really helps uh, it feel fresh because there's nothing wrong with the formula. We love the formula, obviously, but when you don't get the chance to have that intimacy between the characters and feel that connection, it just, I don't know, it just it can feels be boring. Flat. Yeah, yeah, it can be flat. And you know, the thing is too, it's entirely true. It's like some of us are, I mean, we start October 25th and I'm not mm-hmm. joking, yeah. no matter where I am, filming, on set, whatever I'm doing, I literally will take my, instead of just my iPad or something, if I'm traveling during countdown to Christmas, you know my computer's coming with me. Because yeah. wherever I am, that is, <laughs> I mean, literally, I could be out, be 19 days on set, I come home, it's like, I'm going to have my chill time and I get caught up on whatever's going on because it, it just kind of centers me. It brings me back to kind of why I first fell in love with film in the first place and things like that. Yeah. Because it does, a lot of these movies harken back to, you know, the old Cary Grant formulas, you know, and Irene Dunn and, you know, there's just such great stuff. And uh, so they're not just an escape, but they, you know, they're, they feel good. It's like we all need some form of that in our life from some source. So by the, t- you know, when you're starting October 25th, by the time you hit December, you're pretty, I mean, that's a long time to be watching, you know, having Christmas movies on 24 hours a day. And as much as people love it, that's why they notice if there's something fresh. If you want to watch one from just this last month that I felt like did such a great job, the love uh, Love in store. uh, And and the thing that was so good about that one. Oh my God. Can I just jump in and say Tyler Hines and Alexander Breckenridge. Oh yes. Raise that, roof. Raise that would roof. be amazing <laughs> um but uh but anyway what made that one so good is that it was it wasn't a party planning movie thank the lord um but also it was set in uh like a qvc setting and yeah. they were both like good at their jobs and they were both really fun and they both had like decent character motivation like you understood why you know whether why they felt the way they did and there was enough intimate yeah. time with the two of them talking and like they went to an escape room at one point they did like cute activities that made it really good it was definitely the best of this year for sure interesting yeah this was good to this was good to hear because you know these are these are things that i think about and i don't fully have control over those things unfortunately but in the sort of nuances of these moments within them i try to to try to do what i can but there has been some conversations i've had with some of these uh very nice kind Mm -hmm executives that I've gotten to know a little bit yeah and that's something that uh is really good good to know for for these movies so if I end up start doing kooky things that you guys don't yes. appreciate just understand that I'm trying okay okay <laughs> trying I appreciate it no and you have you're very <laughs> humble and I appreciate that too and and uh we'll definitely uh you know keep 
keep giving you the feedback and hopefully we have you on again because because uh it was too long we waited too long in between interviews yeah i've, um, I've got a little more experience yeah. under my belt things to talk about Happy yeah to come back <laughs> well thanks so much for coming on and talking with us this was really fun what a great surprise yeah. just surprise your biggest that fan fun. i like this yeah <laughs> Go, the wardrobe. Sure, you know yep I'm going to keep shipping you out. I'm going to keep shipping you to various people. I hope you don't mind. I believe in recycling. Yeah. I think this is a good way of doing it. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, always here to have your back. <laughs> well, do you want to share like your social media or anything like that, Tyler? Uh, that? Yeah, I think uh, you guys can find me on Instagram. It's Tyler underscore Hines. And I think Twitter is the same thing. And so um, always, always happy to chat there. Facebook, I think is a thing as well. This some some nice fan um, pages I think that have popped up recently and yes. I try to do my due really diligence and, and fan page there. Oh really? <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I have nothing to yeah. compare it to, but yes, yeah, very 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 sweet over there, and I try to pop in wherever I can um, on all of these platforms and sort of chat and have some back and forth with everybody. And uh, if everybody can just please have patience, sometimes I'm not on there or if I don't answer. Um, I'm trying to keep my sanity a little bit, keep a little bit of balance, but I do try to, <laughs> to like, you know, manage myself so I can keep having these genuine interactions with all yeah. these good people. Cause I don't like, uh, sort of blasting out things or just sort of self-promoting. I like to actually just sort of chit chat and, and have yeah. a good laugh with these folks. I want to keep doing that if I can, but yeah, feel free to join me over there. If you can. Well, it's we really sure appreciate yeah. it. And, uh, we'll be excited for your next movie. Good luck. Absolutely. Yeah, well, I think we're we're gonna go shoot two movies. I think in the next couple months, so uh, you guys will see that uh, pop out. Well, we will definitely be covering. Really exciting. Sure. Are you allowed okay, to tell guys, us? Okay, guys, we'll enjoy the rest of the. No, I can't to, tell. You. I don't. I don't. I, I, no, I'm scared of them. <laughs> no, it's like, okay. I don't. Right. I, I repost. That's, right. that's my oh. thing. Is that I repost. That's okay, we'll look forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks yeah. again. Well, Take care. You'll, you'll hear about them, of course. <laughs> Love you guys. Take care. Okay. Enjoy the Take rest care. Of you too. Bye. You bet. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> oh so, my gosh. There you go. <laughs> that was a riot. <laughs> we were planning it, and I, you were, I don't know, asking all these questions and stuff, and I was like so tempted to, <laughs> like, just, <laughs> just trust me. Just trust me. It'll be fine. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but. I still want to do our little ranking really quick. It's only six movies, so it shouldn't oh, take that long. Absolutely. Well, I let me get to my notes because I I, I really took this seriously. Yeah. No. Definitely. So. <laughs> go, go deep on this one. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. They are a new sponsor, and we are really, really thrilled to be working with them. I just finished my time at Sundance Film Festival, so I was so excited to see that we got to work with Sundance Now. And Sundance Now is a streaming service created by AMC Networks for people who appreciate thought-provoking storytelling and fresh perspectives. We're spoon-fed reality junk, competitive dating shows, and singers behind masks. Uh, sometimes we need stories with thought behind them. Don't you want something that's good for your TV soul? Then it's time to check out Sundance Now. Sundance Now offers the best of true crime series, dramas, and thrillers from all over the world. The original series, McMafia, State of the Union, and The Cry have received international praise and awards. You can stream Sundance Now on all your favorite devices, just download the app or watch online and discover exclusive shows from around the world. And I really enjoyed watching the film Quiet Passion that stars Cynthia Nixon playing the poet Emily Dickinson. And it's a beautiful story about her family, about the society in which she lives, her spirituality, and her poetry, of course. And it's a great performance and a beautifully directed, made film, PG-13. I think that a lot of homemakers would like it. And that's the kind of film that you get uh, when you subscribe to Sundance Now. Uh, $4.99 a month. It's an unbeatable price for award-winning content. Uh, so start streaming your next obsession. Try Sundance Now free for 30 days by going to SundanceNow.com and use code Hallmarkies. That's SundanceNow.com, code Hallmarkies for 30 days of free streaming. SundanceNow.com code hallmarkies all right well we're gonna go in chronological order and okay. that way we aren't talking about movies multiple times and you'll just say what uh, we'll go with most recent and uh and then go up to this 
his first movie uh in and, terms of the rankings no yeah so you'll say what we'll both say what number we have it at out of six okay and I, I genuinely about the movie okay i genuinely liked all of these movies oh uh, my gosh that's so. what's so hard they're basically all high <laughs> it's really hard um so all right the first the most recent one we've had is winter in Vale. Mm -hmm. And of course this had him and Lisa Chabert. And what did you think about this one? You know, like we were talking about when we were chatting with Tyler, I, from get the get go, it really was fresh to me. I really love that. And as I noticed when I went back and was watching all of his movies kind of in, you know, order, it was so apparent the journey he's been on and evolving in terms of his comfort level, you know, bringing out his humor and all of that. And it just, it seemed like there was such ease in that movie that it just flowed. And um, I have a special place in my heart for Austria and skiing and all that. And so it just, it just hit, it just ticked all the boxes for me. Yeah, it was really cute. I, you know, Strudel Fest was a lot of fun. Oh my gosh. And how about that? I didn't get that until after the fact when everyone was tweeting about it. The whole that Mean Girls reference that in that oh. movie, she was, her yeah. dad was the Strudel Fest or Mr. The, the, King yeah, the Strudel, poster, whatever. Poster Strudel. King. The poster Strudel. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I want, I'm, so, I'm so intrigued to know, like, was that a plant? Like, did they plan on that or, because I didn't pick up on it right away. I yeah. was really lame about that. I didn't actually either. So, uh, but no, I mean, it was brilliant. Later. Yeah. yeah it really was, good. It was and brilliant. it was just fun. Like seeing them make strudel together and, uh, and the, I mean, that was party planning, but like it didn't overwhelm the movie. Right. And uh, so it, it worked for me. I still have it at number five out of the six because okay. because it is a party planning movie and so right. if i was for if, if, if we were like which one are you going to watch first i would watch the other ones just slightly hair ahead of it sure uh and uh but you know i mean elsie can't go wrong uh and they had you know nice chemistry i like the fact that she left and then came back i always like it when there's sort right. of a little bit of space in between that uh in that you know worked in her i was like yeah, that whole in that sort of uh, formula right yeah because it just feels a little more realistic uh so i like that and the the whole supporting cast was fun uh but yeah it, it would end up at as my five where did where's it interesting for you? oh this is going to be dramatic so it was my number one. Oh, which i one. I'm, I'm telling you this list has morphed and morphed and morphed and gone back and forth <laughs> so many times because they really are like a tie all of them um but you know what i i decided i was going to put my hat on like my tyler hands hat on uh -huh. and my shirt of course being shirts um want to make keep the wardrobe happy so <laughs> i came at it from the standpoint of it being a Tyler Hines movie and you know I just couldn't get away from the fact that I thought it was the movie that had the greatest sense of ease that he had in it you know I mean like watching that scene of them tubing down the hill I swear oh, I yeah. felt like it was just like Lacey and Tyler going down the hill having a hoot and somebody's catching them I feel like there was literally no acting involved there <laughs> Like they yeah. were just having a blast. And so, so that for me really, that's why what made it number one is yeah. I felt like he was, and now I, you know, don't know him personally. We haven't hung out or anything. <laughs> I have no idea, but just going on the vibe I get from him, I felt like that was kind of the most authentic, you know, yeah. type of situation. I don't know. Yeah, but that, so no, that was it's a really fun one. Across, if that makes any yeah. sense. Yeah, totally. Totally does. All right. So then before that, we had The Mistletoe Secret. Mm -hmm. And I think that they did a good job of making this way better than the book, as I said in the interview. Clearly. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. my goodness. And that's I not one I'm really liked, about. yeah, I really liked the dynamic between Tyler and Christopher. Uh, and I thought that he, it was cute movie. between him and Kelly. Kelly's not yeah. the best actress in the world, but you know I, that's what was yeah, that's what was hard about that movie. I think that's probably why I didn't get around to seeing it so easily. But um, 
pleasantly surprised. Yeah, but the thing compared to the wedding, the Christmas and wedding at Graceland movies, where she is expected to kind of be a performer or a former right. performer, here she's just like a simple waitress. And so right. I felt like her performance level fit the character pretty well. So yes. I was more forgiving uh, of her Agreed. weakness. Uh, and I felt like it fit the character better. So I was fine with her in this. And they Me too. they had nice chemistry. I thought their little interactions as they're decorating and and uh, he's being kind of <laughs> kind of a punk a little bit was cute. And and you I, know what her she's got great facial expression. Oh yeah, I just yeah. noticed for the first time in this movie. And so you know her character was kind of vulnerable. And mm -hmm. I thought she played vulnerable well. Yeah, she did. Especially and, across from Tyler, who mm -hmm. his character was kind of doing the same thing where he was kind of just this bro. And then all of a sudden it was like, whoa, you know, well, I'm having yeah. these feelings. What do I do about them? I'm, you know, it was a serial diversion sort of story anyway. Mm -hmm. um, right. So they both kind of had a lot to process. And I, I thought they pulled it off. Yeah. Really, they, and, the execution was great. And one of these uh, things I hate in these kind of movies is when there's like an overdone liar reveal, you know, when, when there's like ah, a mix up yes. and then the person's like, how could you lie to me? And it just oh, always is so false. And <laughs> she had that for about 30 seconds in this and, and then I she got so over it with and that. it was fine. Lying, I was so impressed with that. Yeah. Because it's like, whoa, grown up alert. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> we're having a grown-up uh, moment here so i have this at four in my ranking i have it at four yeah so it's 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 a fun movie and i um it is. a lot of the times i would end up putting christmas movies just a hair over the non christmas movies sure um but uh so that might also explain my my winter in veil ranking but right. i don't know i i enjoyed it so all right then next we had my boyfriend's back, Wedding March 5. So Which this is I our loved. fifth Wedding March movie. It's, <laughs> they're trying to beat Star Wars in yeah, Wedding March exactly. movies, I'm convinced. Um, but, you know, I, this, uh, him and Cindy were so cute and great. Definitely. And uh, there was some nice heart to their, like, their interactions together. I'm just not that big a fan of the wedding other wedding march stuff <laughs> i mean this one no was the i am best i'm not one. a fan of this franchise I, i'm gonna be real on this one and yeah. so it wasn't so much because it was a wedding march movie for me it was actually this is when the wardrobe was born oh during yeah this movie yeah this is uh during the conversations uh during this time was when um i don't I don't even have a clue to give credit to who, but when Hi someone was floating out ideas for names and Heinies was one of them and whoever of us were online at the same time were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we all threw our votes in and whoever thought it up, congrats on that one. That was great. And it just took, and we used that hashtag, I believe, while we were live tweeting. And, um, and then after that, the wardrobe got together, had a meeting and decided that, you know, it was time to come out of the closet, you know, for the shirts. <laughs> <Nice. laughs> the shirts, yeah. you know, Heinz shirts yeah. was birth them. I thought the first one was it's Christmas Eve. I thought that was the first. No, no. Uh, that was the first uh, giveaway he did of a sh I'm sh positive of his could shirt. Be. Yeah, Ruth would but, know about that, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but you That's know, funny. the thing about Wedding March 5 was I really felt he hit his stride with mm -hmm. his comedic timing. I mean, he has got this incredible timing with delivering lines that you don't really see in the earlier movies. It comes at it, for the first time it comes out of that romance, but it was mm -hmm. like full on. And I'm all about, I mean, just you get me a good looking guy with Tom who's comedic and I'm like done for. I just so appreciate that combination. But I even like had a note here just about how, um, he does this thing where there's these beats and pauses. And this is the thing like with directing that you, it's, you really can't teach that with an actor and he'll do this thing where he has this delayed, delayed beat delivery. It accents and sarcasm. And um, like, for instance, 
when they have their meet cute, you know, when he, he's there and he first arrives at the wedding and then Cindy Busby comes, character comes in and they're talking about, you know, the groom's like, oh, what a small world. And he's like, yes, it's very, it's a very small world. You know, like he has these beats, whereas some other yeah. actor might be like, yes, it's a very small world. It's very, right. very small, you know, but like he, he has these beats and also sometimes he'll drop his, uh, you know, voice level down and it'll be almost like a throwaway line if he's walking away or something. And it's, it's just superb. Yeah. Well, he's so. so good at the smolder and really like intensely like focusing on the, on the partner that he's with that you just oh, feel yeah. that connection. It really works. And that was interesting to me to hear him say how he, how he's able to you know, develop that chemistry pretty organically. Yes. And you can feel it. Absolutely. Yeah. Like one of my favorite lines with he and uh, Cindy was when she's trying to put together the pergola or whatever for the wedding. Yeah. And she's clearly struggling and he comes out and he's offering his help and she doesn't want it. So he's walking away and he's like, just saying you're busy. I'm handy. You know, I mean, he yeah. just like throws these, you know, it's like so, and I, I truly, stop me if I'm wrong, because you're the guru, but I can't think of another Hallmark actor who can do that. Uh, with such e organic yeah. ease. No, he's definitely unique. There's no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Uh, so, so refreshing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this one is my number six just because of the wedding march stuff of it. Like Correct. Olivia and Mick are Fair ridiculous. Enough. They're behaving yeah. like 20 year olds and they're in their 50s. Yeah. This is <laughs> absurd. <laughs> it's, it's a little tough. It can be a little cringeworthy at times. In the fourth one, with them giving a promise ring, the most ridiculous <laughs> thing I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. And uh, oh, so. Man. I mean, all that stuff just is so flat and doesn't work at yeah, all yeah. and is ridiculous and they just need to get oh, married. No. I mean, it give me a break. And so it's number six, but it's not for him, but it just says the Correct. movie. And as I said earlier, having my hind shirt on, watching it, I gave it, I put it at three just it's because three. of his yeah. evolution and what right. he was bringing to the Hallmark movie. Sure. That it was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is true. I mean, you think about it. They had, you know, Andrew Walker uh, mm -hmm. in this series. They had Peter Benson in the series. They had, Correct. you know, they've had some pretty, pretty good, talented people. But right. I mean, in my opinion, the best combo was this combo in Wedding March 5. And, and you know what? Let me just yeah. go check on this because, of course, being the geek I am, I just did a, you know, I did a whole deep dive on this one. Um, <laughs> and, uh, Oh, I was thinking this was one Nina was on for writing, but it wasn't. It was Kim mm. Byer Johnson. Yeah. So anyway, but, Nina's but, on Whitney. the next one. So yes. Nina wrote Flip That Banter. Romance. She did. I think she yes, actually did a rewrite did. on it, a full full page rewrite on it. But and I didn't realize that the uh, the EP Joel Rice uh, came from Double Holiday, which wasn't Nina on that one too. Yes. Yeah, she was. With Christopher Palau. Yeah. Yes. So the whole witty yeah. banter thing, yeah. So I immediately yeah. always think, you know, when I think yeah. you come up yeah. with witty banter. And we talked about this one quite a bit in the interview, but uh, yeah, it was a really cute concept, the whole idea of these side-by-side -side renovations. Yeah. And the connection between them two, the kiss was so good. Uh, <laughs> it was such a groundbreaking <laughs> homemade from our I know. Moment. <laughs> it was. It was so good. And oh my goodness, uh, it was there priceless. Were, it had it almost was a little too full i'd say the, the cast uh, you had maybe i think one too many side characters that you didn't necessarily need so many you know uh, it's interesting you say that because now that you say that i can figure it out i had that yeah. feeling but i didn't know where it was coming from yeah and i because i it's a little distracting sometimes when you have someone like crystal low or uh and you heart they're in like two you know two scenes uh or sure. something like that um and the whole sort of mix up with the with the um permit yes yeah. <laughs> um, and, the but, and then the flooring was yeah it, wasn't it the flooring i think yeah and then you had was, the, yeah. them coming to interview them there's yeah, yeah there was just a lot going on it which, really was you know added to that feeling that can you feel one feels mm -hmm. when they're renovating but yeah. it was there was something a little like you said, it was a little too, too full. But moments. that's nitpicking. I really did enjoy Absolutely. it. I, I have it at three. And I have it. I'm so sorry. I got to get back to my, uh, where is it? Okay. I've got it at two. 
Oh, very good. Yeah. And again, really coming fun. from the standpoint of quote unquote being Tyler Hines movies, because that was the movie for me where his humor, because that was only, that was after it's falling for you. So it was movie number three that he did. And I felt, I mean, when I, when I hear the title, Flip Your Romance, I think of his head, his sh- the shining yeah. moment when his head comes through the wall. Right. That yeah. I was literally <laughs> the shining moment. Oh my <laughs> That's God. Funny. I'm up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was just insanely great. That was and and they so did great. a pretty good job of making it feel like they were renovating. Like in yeah. comparison, I was not a big fan of the Danica McKellar, uh, Andrew Walker design. That did movie. not work for me. Yeah, and no, that did not work for me. There was just almost no. I felt like they spent more time in that movie playing bingo than designing <laughs> anything. And because yeah. it, it was billed as this like rivalries, these different, they're going to have different design aesthetics. They're going to have different, different styles. And it really wasn't at all. It was them like going and playing trivia and bingo. Yeah. And I don't know, that one was disappointing. This, this one, it did feel like they had genuine different design aesthetics and oh, different yeah. styles. I love the reveal. It yeah. Like the reveal was fun. Sh- yeah. Show where you're watching the reveal and they're walking through. I'm like, getting ideas and (laughs) no I loved it yeah it was it was good uh so then we have it's Christmas Eve so this is his first Mm -hmm. Christmas movie and uh this also has a very witty script but it's by Tracy Andreen who is Mm -hmm. the co-queen of Hallmark Riders her her Julia oh, I didn't Wolf that. Okay. and uh and nina are my three favorites and well three of my favorites i i loved so many of them but they're really good at banter the three of them and uh what i i think i liked the most about this movie was all the little sort of meta moments in the script you know where they're hmm. talking about uh or, or, that's right from romantic comedy uh that's right from that's the meet cute and yep. that made it yep. to me more fun uh, I thought she yes. did a really good job with that. And I I also was impressed. I thought Leanne did a good job and that she, there was more of, her, of there was more singing in general than I expected. Because a lot mm-hmm. of times in these Hallmark movies, they'll have, they'll sort of build it up as a music movie and there'll be like mm-hmm. one song. But, right. but this, there were multiple songs and multiple songs that she wasn't even singing in. Like right. you had the mayor's son and you had the, and I thought that was cool and also i loved her humming and things Mm -hmm. like if you're someone who's very musical you do that yeah you know it's just kind of a part of your day and like when she was i loved that yeah Yeah. no that was great and they had great chemistry and Mm -hmm. i thought that the whole uh sort of message with her you know grieving over uh was it her her dad her father her father yeah Yeah, it was her father and then adjusting to her mom's new husband right that really worked um, if i was going to nitpick in this movie i don't understand her job because she was supposedly a superintendent of schools but she yeah. was on the road a lot what like you don't travel like as a superintendent of schools yeah consultancy <laughs> she was like all over the country yeah. or something and i'm like i don't understand <laughs> what's yeah. going on here no but, it was a very sweet it was a very sweet calm movie i really yeah. liked it yeah, of too. course, I loved the shawl sweaters. I yeah, mean, that's kind of almost like the winter version of the Henley, right? You know, for the wardrobe. Um, yep. But uh, and I loved seeing him with the little girl in the movie. I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eden yeah, Summer they had Gilmore. a really cute, cute. That was a great dynamic. Yeah. I think has that been the only? That's been the only movie where he's had a daughter, right, or a child, or I think so. Yeah, only one. I think so, yeah. It was, was a very soft nice. version of him. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, again, because of the fact that we were talking in the context of his movies, I mean, again, these all are basically tied in my book. Right. So I'm nitpicking putting them in any form of order. But um, for me, I felt in comparison to his other movies, kind of like, like, yeah, okay. I, I see that this one. was his first movie. Yeah. Kind yeah. of a hesitancy and a, it was very soft. It was very cautious. That's the word. It that was makes very sense. Cautious. I can see that. Yeah, which makes sense. But um, so, I mean, literally, I'm completely splitting hairs here trying to get a numeric <laughs> you know, yeah. order for these films because I love them all. Right. Um, it's like trying to choose between your children. No. Um, yeah. So. So I have this at two for me. Okay. And I have this as six. Right. Okay. Last one. His yeah. first, first one to air is Falling for You. 
Yeah. And there's so many things I love about this movie. It's my number one. It's one of my favorite of recent years, non-Christmas Hallmark movies. Uh, oh, wow. And there were a lot of things I loved about it. First of all, I love the fact that they both both of their jobs are taken seriously and they're like actually grown-ups. And there yes. were so many things they did in that movie that really subverted expectations. Like for instance, he goes to the meeting, right? And mm-hmm. uh, and instead of being there for her. And which is right. a rational decision because he's got he's his business is just as important as her business. And absolutely anyway, so instead of I kind of I hate the scene in these movies where someone's giving a speech and they're like i have to leave now i have to you know go back to i'm in the wrong place i always hate that it feels so false and you know just finish your speech just finish and then go um and i was i so appreciated that they they had him like schedule it earlier and then he shows up and like the, yeah, it was a little corny that like the, the crowd parts ways and there you see him there. It was, but to me, it was like so spoon worthy. I loved it. And I loved the fact that she actually took the job in the city. What? Yeah. <laughs> that never it's happens. Like, and, I know. and he, he was just like, I'm going to be there for you, whatever you need. Like it was just so sexy to me. And, yeah. uh, and then also I, I mean, the whole thing with the bachelor bake off was was hilarious and ridiculous <laughs> um, truly because it doesn't really make sense like why like a bachelor bake-off you're you're it's basically like buying a date you know right. with the person right, right. and yeah. and so why is his why is the mother bidding i have no idea but it was, <laughs> it was so funny to me and well, hey yeah <laughs> yeah i love me some lenny evans yeah and and then I also loved the kiss in that movie. I about died because that they, was very yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> because we had had yeah. so many near kisses in a row in movies and I was getting so tired of them. And there's like the littlest sound that, that, that breaks them up, you know, first on the bridge. And yeah. I was like, Oh, ugh. I was really irritated. Here and we then, go. She just, then she just goes for it. And I was like, yes, yes! I'm so excited. <laughs> and, uh, so I absolutely loved that kiss. It was so good. And I thought they had great chemistry and uh, all the fall stuff worked for me. And I just really enjoyed it. So it's my favorite. It's my number yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. And also, ironically, directed by one of your faves, Peter DeLuise. That, yeah, that's true. That's true. And, and then for what, me, I love Pumpkin by Pie Wars. And I noticed, who I also love. Yes. Yes. Um, and he, oh, he wrote for um, that Love in Store. Uh, yes, she did. It's, I she, know. Uh, she did. And, and she did Miss yes, Christmas, which is, yep. which is amazing. So, right. yeah, she's she's great. So good. So there was there was definitely a lot of uh, really, a lot of really good people behind that. Mm-hmm. So it's my favorite. What, where, what do you Oh, so you've got that for number one? I do. Yeah. I have it number one. Wow. I have it in number five. Okay. And again, yeah. this is literally like ranking my tied movies. <laughs> <laughs> again to stress and emphasize but right. um for me falling for you again kind of harkening back to what i said about it, it's christmas eve he was so new in it yeah that i felt like it was the, it was great because i felt like it was the first time we saw all these different aspects of him yeah. and the different things he was going to continue to ultimately bring to his hallmark movies but it was all still so new he wasn't yeah. like letting loose in any of those type of dynamics yet as he did further on in the in the rest of the movies so so that was just what it was for me it was still you know kind of a little bit of a holding back from what ultimately we would see from him well that's great well let us know if you're listening what your ranking would be and what you think of all these movies and what you thought of what tyler had to say that thank you so much to tyler for for doing that and coming on that was really fun and uh, and thank you for coming on and talking. This was a lot of fun. And why don't, you tell people, why don't you tell people about the Twitter handle and if they yes. can follow. So the wardrobe is busy at work, always looking to support Tyler. And we know you all are too. So Twitter is at Hind Shirts and at Instagram now. We're on Instagram. So we're oh, at Hind yeah. Shirts on Instagram. Yes. 
Great. Exactly. Well, very good. Well, thank you again. And uh, yeah, we will uh, <laughs> we'll have to have you back on again. Maybe, maybe finish these I would two love movies. It. Exactly. Uh, but, yeah. And you can follow me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. And make sure you're following the podcast at Home Cookies Pod and Home Cookies Podcast all of our social media and on iTunes and YouTube. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. It really helps us out. And if you are listening on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We really, really appreciate it. We have our patron group, which is also really great and is such a help to us and allows us to do these fun things. And then we have our merch store, which has tons of fun shirts. So if you want shirts, <laughs> check that out. The information's all in the description section. So we'd love for your support. And thanks again for coming on the podcast and we'll talk again oh, soon. Oh, it was such a pleasure. Take <laughs> care, Rachel. Bye, everyone. <laughs>